All right, folks, so the data that I've been talking about is finally in. This is super exciting stuff. Uh, stick around, I'm gonna try to go through this uh, the best that I can to present uh, something I think is incredibly, incredibly powerful, incredibly, incredibly earth-shaking in the world of, of health, quite honestly, and, and cardiovascular disease. And so uh, last night, Dr. Uh, Professor Matt Budoff uh, at UC, from the Lundquist Institute at UCLA presented a collection of data, which will soon be published in Metabolism, the journal, the abstract will be published there very shortly. And what, they, what he looked at were a collection of people on very low carb ketogenic diets that happen to have extremely, extremely high LDL cholesterol. We're talking as high as 600 milligrams per deciliter, just off the chart, super high. And what they did was they did something called a coronary CT angiogram. So they looked at very high level, very precise, very sensitive study looking at the coronary vessels in the heart. And they looked to find out how much plaque was in the heart of these people with this super, super high cholesterol. Um, and they compared it to age match controls that were identical essentially in every other way. They had the same level of uh, you know, uh, uh, body mass index uh, was, was almost identical. The ages were almost identical, average age of about 55. They all were healthy. They, none of them had diabetes. None of them had hypertension. So they were identical effectively in every single way, except the one difference being that one group had super high, ridiculously high LDL cholesterol versus one that had normal LDL cholesterol. Okay. And the average person that had the high cholesterol had it at least that high for at least five years, right? And Matt, Matthew Budoff, the principal investigator, is the, arguably the world's leading authority on how rapidly you can detect plaque accumulation in the coronary vessels over time. And five years is plenty of time to see this, right? So the prediction should be, based on the current understanding or beliefs around cholesterol and heart disease is the group that has the highest cholesterol over time should definitely have more plaques in their arteries. That is what we would expect, right? What did they find? So what did they find? So this is a uh, slide from his presentation. It shows that the two groups here, the one on the left is a group that had the super high uh, uh, cholesterol and the one on the right is a group that had the normal cholesterol. And guess what? There was no difference statistically between the two groups. It did not matter if you had super high cholesterol, as high as 600 milligrams per deciliter versus somebody that has a normal LDL cholesterol, right? Um, in fact, in fact, even though there was no statistical difference, the trend was that the people with the high cholesterol had less plaque in their arteries, right? So what does this mean? Does it mean that you can ignore LDL cholesterol and it doesn't matter? No, it doesn't mean that. And Dr. Budoff in his 17 minute presentation says that no, you cannot ignore that. He's still a believer in LDL cholesterol being causal to cardiovascular disease. But what he is saying is that it appears to be in some instances, you know, this particular set of population, low carb, lean, otherwise metabolically healthy, that it appears that cardiovascular disease is not developing or not developing at any significant rate at all. So that may give some of you guys that are in this situation some level of relief. You know, his suggestion was if you have high cholesterol but all the other markers look good, get some sort of an imaging study, maybe get a coronary calcium score, and if it is low or zero, then you're probably pretty good. I think that's that's probably where it is. So to me, as I've been saying all along, it means that LDL cholesterol, while potentially causal for cardiovascular disease, becomes a dependent variable. It depends what else is going on, right? And so uh, this is big, this is huge. The study is gonna continue on probably for several years. They're gonna get one year data to see if any progression has occurred. And if they still do not see progression, even though they've already had five years of, of a collection period, more or less, uh, then it is likely that you know, we can start to say that, hey, LDL cholesterol and by extension, ApoB, because ApoB is part of LDL, uh, LDL is part of the ApoB subset, basically, um, that we have to rethink the entire uh, nature of LDL is always, 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 or ApoB is always, always, always causal cardiovascular disease because 
clearly in this population, which has never been studied before, particularly in this level of detail, it appears to not be so. All right, guys. Um, tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific time, I'm going to be hosting uh, both uh, Dr. Nick Norwitz and David Feldman to discuss this in detail in a much longer format. But this is the overview. I hope you guys uh, it, you know, appreciate it. Uh, I, think it's, I think there's more to come on this. More research needs to be done. There's more questions that need to be asked. Can you expand this to everybody and say LDL cholesterol doesn't matter to anybody? No, you cannot say that. But, you know, we're starting to see some significant questions that need to be asked. All right, guys, thanks. Thanks so much. Let me know what you think. Let me know if this, is, if this has been your experience, too. I see a lot of people saying, hey, I'm, I'm carnivore, I'm keto, my cholesterol's through the roof, but my CA ski score is zero. I've got no evidence of heart disease. Let me know if that's been your case in the, in the comments below. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah. These are the baseline characteristics, and there were differences most notably, of course, in LDL cholesterol. Juice 72, average LDL in the keto group. Miami Heart group had an LDL of 123. All the other variables were well matched um, uh, as best we could match these, these two different populations. So when we looked at these population, they were both 55 years old. Uh, again, the uh, lean mass hyperresponders had an LDL of 272 milligrams per deciliter on an average of 4.7 years duration. So it wasn't like this was one week of being having an LDL that, this high. This was a, almost a five-year duration of having a ketogenic diet and an LDL above 190 milligrams per deciliter. And when we compared them to patients with more normal uh, LDLs, LDL, mean LDL of 123, there was no difference in coronary plaque burden. So we did not see any uh, evidence that this LDL of 272 induced more atherosclerosis over this five-year period.